Hello, friends, and welcome back for part number 43 of our walkthrough of Oxygen Not Included Spaced Out DLC. Let's talk about some stuff that's changed from last time. Uh, the first thing is that we are fully moved into the new base, except for bathrooms. Um, we will cover that here in just a little bit. But um, as far as all the other systems that are up here, these are things that we've seen in other uh, parts of the walkthrough. So if you have not seen those other parts, just check out when we are settling or landing on any other asteroid to get the idea of these systems. But it's a very basic ventilation system to get rid of any gases that we don't want, like carbon dioxide and chlorine. Very simple oxygen system to keep our suits filled up. Uh, we have all of our solar panels up here. There's an area that we're going to use for shipping. Um, liquid locks, that kind of stuff, so... Oh, and the big battery bank. So hopefully all this should look pretty familiar if you've been watching some of the other parts. So, what we need to get to in this video is we need to start getting our power uh, up for this asteroid. And I know we already have solar panels, but they will not push as much as we're going to need. So now it's time to start unpacking all these interplanetary payloads. Why are you scalding? Oh. Probably because it's very hot right here. That would make sense. Um, hmm. Guess we could probably start sealing this up again. Try to dig around this, but some of the abyssalite is still really hot, and despite it saying that it has no thermal conductivity, it apparently still does, so that's kind of annoying. But get out of there, nails. Okay, whatever, we'll deal with that later. So back on the uh, ice asteroid, what we need to do is start setting up our power system. And like I mentioned, we should be have, we should have been sending ourselves hydrogen for quite a while. So I've got a lot of hydrogen gas here that should keep me powered for kind of a long time. Um, so I stopped shipping it to myself up at the top of this base where we were shipping it out. I just disconnected the line that would be sending hydrogen into our interplanetary launcher. So that's no longer happening. But let's get a simple hydrogen setup going here. Um, first of all, we actually need our payload opener to be done. Um, I know I've mentioned this just a little bit, but this is one of the easiest ways to get all of the supplies that you need uh, unpacked from these payload uh, that, that can be sent down or if a rocket crash lands or something like that. One of the easiest ways you can get that stuff unpacked and into any of your systems that you'd want. So I'm just gonna put a payload opener down here for anything that is solid, which will be a lot of the gold and stuff like that that we originally brought here, uh, we could just do this and just run a line over via the shipping lines, and then we can use some, ins or rather some, yeah, insulated gas pipe will probably be the smartest for any gases that we get from here, which will be all of our hydrogen. So let's do that. I'm just going to run it over here, and I did move this area up a little bit so that we could have a storage area for all of our hydrogen. And we just need to wall this off really quickly and start unpacking some of these payloads. Um, some of these, I actually wonder if we could just unpack ourselves, but probably shouldn't. Yeah, we'll get to that. So yeah, just going to get a payload opener here. We're going to do a couple things at the same time in this video. Uh, just kind of planning out and talking about this. Nails, you just really have a death wish, don't you? Man, this area is really hot. I might actually need to start running some pipes down here to cool this. Ah, stop dying. Okay. I guess we need to move nails out of the way. Probably should have done this earlier while I was digging this part of the map out. But they'll be okay. Just rub some dirt on it and get back out there. Alright. Let me check our temperature here really quickly. Yeah, what I'm dealing with here is this last petrified fossil. Um, the abyssalite out here can still be very hot. And it will exchange its temperature with stuff that's around it, which, yeah, doesn't make a lot of sense to me. So, anyway, we'll be dealing with that in the meantime, apparently. So back on this one, uh, the one thing we want to do is start getting all of our hydrogen storage set up. But the second thing, we need some water flow here, because I did talk about the fact that we were going to want another liquid lock here with some suits uh, set up next to it. But we don't really have the water to do that right now. Um, so we need to start making our own. Uh, we do have water that's in here, but that's not... Like, we need a good amount to start out with so that we can start making more by melting the ice uh, that is also on this planet. And <laughs> there's not any shortage of that, so there's plenty of it here. So we're just going to create a quick uh, ice melter here, which we've done before. 
Uh, we did a little bit on this planet here, but the heat source was just the hot salt water that's coming out of here. We're going to do something really similar to this, uh, but we're just going to be use a, using a liquid tepidizer that we haven't used before. Nikola is probably fine. Jean can take a little bit more damage here. Okay, you need to get out. I'm just going to have to micromanage this a little bit. I probably... I mean, ideally I would have gotten this done, but I didn't know this was going to be a problem. Uh, so yeah, whatever. We'll get that taken care of. If we need to start cooling this down, we also do have a line of cool liquid here that's still not being used. That we could just run down and kind of circle around here just to cool this area down a little bit. Might not be the worst idea ever. Um, hmm. Oh well. All right. So, the pool of water that we're going to make here, we're going to start off by melting uh, polluted ice first. Because polluted ice has a lower melting point, meaning that it's easier to melt. And then we will make a mixture of polluted water and regular water in here. Which is where all the runoff from our laboratories and sinks and stuff like that is going to go. So, I'll start using the water that's in here to hook up to that. And then any leftovers will get sent down into here. It'll be used to melt some ice. And uh, it'll be very uh, much more effective than uh, otherwise. So let's uh, get all this stuff built out here really quickly. Let's give my duplicates a little bit of time to get the payload opener done. And I'll start clearing these alerts that keep distracting us over here and get this cleared out. So give me just a little bit of time and I'll have that stuff in better shape. And then we can actually talk about the setups for each of these two things here in just a minute. Okay, we've got the payload opener up. We have both of our spots all built out here. Let's just build a really simple hydrogen setup really quickly. Um, all I'm going to be doing is creating an area where we're going to dump all of our hydrogen into. So I'm just going to use one gas pump and I'm going to hook it up to a gas reservoir. This is the exact same reason that I do it for the oxygen, so that we're only pumping at a time where we need to, and we can get the filtration at the same time without blocking up the system and making uh, a mess. So just need, whoops, I always do this wrong. Just need an evaluation point to see what type of gas it is so that once we clean it all out, it shouldn't really care anymore. Um, and if it's not hydrogen, we're just going to send it out into space. We actually already have a vent, but I guess it's more wasteful to go that far. Deconstruct that tile so we can actually get to it. So, yeah. Uh, just need a gas pipe element sensor. If it is not hydrogen, which means we're going to need a not gate, then we will want to send it out into space. So, let's do this. Where is this? Gas shutoff. Just gonna hook it up right there so that the line is basically goes from our pump, gets evaluated to see what it is. If it's not hydrogen, it'll get blown out into space. If it is hydrogen, it's gonna go into the tank and then it'll come back out the tank. Um, should probably start using some insulated pipes by the time we get here so we don't freeze everything because that hydrogen's gonna be pretty cold. Um, just gonna send it out here and we'll set up a power setup here in just a second. So let's get our automation hooked up really quickly. Just threw a not gate on the evaluation point. So we're looking for anything that's not hydrogen we want to send out. And then I'm only going to turn the pump on if this tank is actually low. Uh, we do the same thing here. I usually just set it to like 80-20. This makes it so that the filtration system is always clear and able to run correctly. Um, this is not 100% necessary, but this is a lazy way to both um, get the materials that you want pumped through the line while filtering out stuff that might already be there. Um, you could do this in another way where you like make a liquid lock and then pre-vacuum this out before you send any hydrogen in, but I don't really care that much. Uh, so I'm not going to do that. I could also sweep some of this stuff out of here that we don't really need. So have them start moving that too. Just put an automatic dispenser right here, which is a pretty handy place to have it. Because um, then if it drops somewhere nearby, your duplicates are in their suits and they need to build out here, but there's material all on the ground right here. They can grab it. If they don't need to get into a suit to do something but grab a supply, then they can do that too. So, pretty handy. Alright, I think that they will be done with this quickly enough. So I shouldn't need to buy more time with an editing break. I really don't try to do that that often, but there's just some times where it's like, oh, there's nothing to do. Okay, bye. 
Uh, so yeah, just going to have them get that all set up here. We could also juggle back and forth between our tasks here, which I'm sort of doing on purpose, only because there's so much juggling that needs to be done and spaced out. So I know there have been some people that have said this is really complicated and really hard to follow, but that's kind of just what spaced out is. It's much harder than the base game. Um, so my recommendation really is that if you have not completed the base game or at least gotten a lot of progress in the base game, you might want to try that first before moving on to space out because things are so much more complicated here. And there's so much more that needs to be managed, which is good, but it's also rough if you're a newer player. So the first thing we probably should do, let's wait for these duplicates to finish up. They have to do a lot of inefficient movement to go grab the gold uh, from outside, or I guess from right here would probably work too, but... Yeah, not the most efficient movement here to get them working on this, so... Um, yeah. Let's just juggle back over to the water setup really quickly. Just so that we know what's going on here. So, the water setup, um, I want to start it out with just a little bit of clean water first. So, the first thing I'm going to do is just put a, a vent right there. And then I'm going to hook it up to the water line that should be coming out of my rocket. I think it got disturbed because I destroyed the engine. So we can destroy all this junk too. Need to get some ladders up here. As I'm like, hey, the duplicates are taking too long. Let's just give them more jobs. That'll make them go faster. Let's at least get this part done first and then we can worry about the other part. Uh, I'm gonna put this tile back. So yeah, uh, we want to hook it up to our water that's going to be coming out of our rocket, which we usually will take in this tank here. And I don't want to dump all of that water in here at first, just some of it, just to get everything started. Now that this pump is on, we can seal this room up and uh, we can start sending our hydrogen in here too. So let's find a place to do that. Come on, game. There we go. By the way, uh, somebody did mention to me that the reason that those loads are so long... By the way, are these granite? Oh, why does it always do that? Uh, the reason why the loads are so long is because it autosaves, which makes sense. Um, but the thing that I've noticed, and especially since we're having all these performance problems, is that the autosaves actually, like, oddly help with that. If I turn autosaving off and play for, like, three or four cycles, my memory usage is horrible. So it must do some kind of, like, cleaning out of some structures somewhere that it doesn't typically do unless you get an autosave. So, yeah, I just wanted to respond to that after doing a little bit more testing. I will do a full video about um, performance in general, and I know my frame rate isn't great here, um, but that's just kind of what happens when Spaced Out gets big enough, so, yeah... All right, so now that we have all this stuff running, once we get the hydrogen in here, I'll just seal this off with one tile and we'll be good to go. We can also set up all of our power stuff here really soon. Uh, this will need some time to run too. So we could prioritize it in a certain order. Let's prioritize this at seven so they get the pipes done first. And then these done at six so that the water flows after that. There we go. And then after that, we can do our power because we just need a couple of hydrogen generators that are going to generate power from the hydrogen that we have. And that's what will run out of this other tank to uh, head over to where it's going to actually be used for power. So there we go. And if this, again, this if this is really um, cold hydrogen, which I'm expecting it to be, I could just use some radiant pipes here to keep that cool. And just some testing on the other asteroid, at least for... Oh, by the way, Nikola got too injured, so I just created a triage cot near where he fell down. Uh, we should be fine now. You don't get to rest. You're only partly injured. Uh, it does keep all these hydrogen generators pretty cool from what I can tell. So that experiment kind of worked out pretty well. Just shows you how busted this setup is, as you're effectively just turning polluted water into very cold hydrogen gas. Uh, yeah, these these are are very powerful. Actually, let me check something. Um, let me see if we have any more seeds with this. I don't need to track all these resources anymore. Probably put them back at some point. Uh, okay, these do not produce extra seeds. So that's... I couldn't remember if they did that or not. The last time I had uh, played with these for a long period of time, I couldn't remember if the setup was getting bigger because I was finding more seeds or because they were producing more, so... 
There you go. All right. The rest of this setup is almost done. And then once it is done, we can stop venting all of our oxygen, which is probably not a great thing to do right now, but we'll be fine. Uh, then that'll be ready to go. We can seal this up and have our little hydrogen room going. Come on, Camille, hurry up. Looks like they're just about done. Let me just awkwardly buy a couple more seconds of time, and there we go. Now we can seal this up. I think everything should be good to flow. Yep, it's coming up here, so close that really quickly. Set it to 9, which is not overly necessary, but may as well. So yeah, um, all of our setup for the hydrogen should be good. All we're going to need to add now is a smart battery because we only really want to burn this hydrogen if there's a need for it. So just going to set up a battery here and I'll set it to super low numbers so that we can run off of solar as much as possible and then just use the hydrogen in case we actually need the extra power. So there we go. Filtration is happening now. Uh, once again, this, the tile before is going to detect if it's hydrogen. If it's hydrogen, it will allow it to pass by this setup here. If it's not hydrogen, it'll get stolen from the line and blow down into space. So it's basically already filtered now. So if you, like, this isn't always 100% necessary to do it this way, but this is just a lazy way to do it. And if this sh shutoff is never running, then there's no extra power required to run this other than the pump you would already have. And I do drop it into a room like this so that we can overpressurize it. We could hook it straight up to the payload opener, but I'd rather have my duplicates unload a whole bunch of it at a time. So, yeah. Anyway, there's a bunch of different ways we could do this. I don't know why I'm going into such detail, but... Yeah, let's get our water setup going here, because the power setup will effectively be done and run itself here in just a bit, so... No reason to keep obsessing over that too much. The water setup here. Um... One thing you're going to want to make sure of is that you have somebody specced out for shipping um, so that they can build the stuff that we need. But it's going to be really similar to a setup that we already did. Um, so that setup is looking like... where is it again? This. Basically just a snaking rail for conveyors. At the end is a weight plate so that it will uh, close the chute whenever there is a piece of ice that drops in here. And then we'll have a couple of other things that are different than this, but the principle is basically the same. Wrong asteroid. So, uh, what we can do is we can just delete a tile here, and then we can expect our duplicates to build out the conveyor rail that's going to be kind of snaking this back and forth. So just something like this is can be really basic, simple to do. Conveyor chute at the end. Even if the ice melts before it gets there, it does leave an empty basket, so you do have to do something like this. Uh, otherwise, it would be a lot more convenient to not have to do that. Whoa, why did I do that? Uh, here, let me snip this really quickly. I'm like dumping all of our precious water out for no reason. Totally forgot that we had hooked that up, so I guess my duplicates finished their job up here. Thanks. Uh, let's see. Power is coming up here. Smart battery. Let's set this really quickly. I'm gonna do it like 30% and like 5%. Super low numbers so that we can assure that we're using as much solar power as possible. The only annoying thing, and I wish there was a different piece of automation, and I know someone's probably gonna tell me there's a mod, but I try not to play with mods so these can be more universal for everyone. But I wish there was a smart battery that had the same capacity as these battery modules. Uh, only because that would make you actually wait until these are super low before everything is good to go. I guess you could hook it up to like a wattage sensor or something like that, but I don't know if that would actually work. Because that's like how much flow is on the line. I don't know, maybe I'll iterate on this and figure out a better way to do it. Are we out of Igneous Rock? Really? Huh. Well, I hope there's more down here. If not, we might have to start shipping ourselves some. Yeah, there's some right here. Okay, we can get more. Anyway. So yeah, what we're going to need for this setup, now that this is done, we're going to hook up an automation wire from our weight plate to the conveyor chute. We want to set our weight plate to uh, only allow stuff to come through if it's below 10 kilograms. If it's ever above that, it will shut the door, basically, and all the ice that's eventually going to be on this line will just stop and uh, have to just stay right there. So like I mentioned, we're gonna need to put a little bit of clean water in this first, and this little bit of clean water is just to get us started, 
and because uh, that will help prevent the gas off from the polluted water up until we can fully seal this to the point that duplicates don't need to go in there anymore. Then I don't care that much, but I don't want to waste any of the polluted water that we have for the time being uh, if we can do it a better way. The other thing that I have here is if you happen to find any water, like you swept it up, or sorry, mopped it up. I guess you could sweep water. Uh, I've done that before, it's not very effective. Uh, if you mop up any water, you can drop it off here too. So I probably have some around already that I can use and just throw in here. Um, this will also happen because the ice and stuff will probably melt as your duplicates were mining it out and interacting with it over time. So that can definitely help as well. Um, but we don't need a lot of these this uh, base water. I still do want to save some so we have some for our bathroom. So that might be all we can really get right now. Let me disconnect this. And then I'm going to change our lines really quickly to hook this up to our bathroom. So that when our duplicates start using bathrooms, they will produce the extra polluted water that we need. Something like that. And we can just disconnect these lines. Well, I'll just leave that hooked up how it is. And I'll just have this one come down and connect for our polluted water. So any polluted water that gets produced is going to jump into here. Um, and it will fall into our tank. At the bottom of our tank is where we need to put the warmer that is eventually going to melt the ice. Because otherwise we will have water that is not warm enough. And it will... Uh, the ice will basically freeze all the water that's down here, and then we're right back in the same position. Uh, so let's get that set up. So, we need a liquid tepidizer that we're going to put down here. You can make this out of a couple different materials. This is not going to be ridiculously hot water. Um, I'm probably going to try to keep it around, like, 25. Only because that's going to be the water that we're also going to use for oxygen, for cooling and potentially to grow some uh, bristle blossoms so that we can make berry sludge on this planet, which is one of the best reasons to keep all of this natural sleet wheat growing down here. Looks like there's still a little bit of water here and there. Um, but yeah, so at the bottom of it, we're gonna put a liquid tepidizer like I was mentioning. These things take quite a bit of power, so um, you can do one of two things. You could either set up a second power transformer that's mostly for this and like some other stuff that can be down here, which I might do only because uh, refined metal is easier to get now than uh, the other types, but I don't have a great place to put this. Hmm. I guess we could just put it here. It's not my favorite place, but we could just split it up the lines here really quickly. I can't really put it here because that's where all the suit docks and stuff are going to go. Um, I guess we could put it down here. Actually, we might as well. I don't know why I'm having such a hard time with this. Um, yeah, let's just put it down here. Because I'll need to connect it to some other stuff that's going to be down here too. And if we wind up taking the iron volcanoes, we're going to need heavy watt wire anyway. But it's just kind of at a premium right now, so I don't want to waste it if I don't have to. Deconstruct this really quickly. Uh, yeah. We're kind of in some excruciating detail here, so let's wait until we have some more stuff built up. Um, I'll get the liquid tepidizer hooked up to some power, uh, which will eventually be some heavy watt wire that runs all the way down here. Um, and then we'll start filling this up with some polluted water. We'll get our polluted ice. We'll make sure the tepidizer turns on, all that fun stuff. Uh, yeah, we'll be back with this in just a bit. Okay, this looks like it's pretty much ready to go. One thing that we need first is to make sure that this tepidizer doesn't overheat everything. Um, so I'm going to put a thermo sensor right next to it so that we can tell what the temperature is of the water, relatively anyway. And we'll have to just kind of dial this thermo sensor in to figure out what the right number is going to be. But I also want it to be higher. By the way, I don't have it hooked up to power yet, otherwise it would just start. Um, I want to figure out what this number is, and we're going to keep it a little bit higher to start off with. So if this is ever below, like, I don't know, 35 or something like that, then I want the tepidizer to turn on. The only reason is because I really don't want any of this water that's down here to refreeze because of the ice that's coming in. So 
Let's hook that up. And there we go. It says it's not submerged in liquid, so we do need a little bit more here before it's going to start. So let's hook this back up to our lines with the rocket. And I guess whatever we don't get to our sinks, that's just too bad. Uh, so here we go. Which I don't think that worked. <laughs> uh, let's see. We're going to have to just do this a different way. I guess we could do it. Oh, man, this is so awkward. There, this is probably better. There we go. Uh, not the greatest way of doing it, but sure, whatever. There we go. So we're just going to drain the rest of the water that we have out of here. Once again, this is not going to be a problem if you just used all of your salt water that would start on this asteroid if you're playing on the exact same seed. But if you haven't, you're going to have to deal with this exact same problem. So we're going to get as much water as we possibly can in here and hope that this fills up enough to submerge our tepidizer. If not, we could do a couple things to help out. So like, let's just do one here really quickly where I put a metal tile there and that'll help the surface area a little bit. There we go. Okay, it's kind of turning on here and there, but once we get that metal tile in there, that should also help. Uh, we could also move this bottle emptier. I guess we're not really getting anything from the bottle emptier anymore anyway. Did that just delete all the water? There was like a whole tile of polluted water here and it didn't move it out of the way, it just destroyed it. Well, that's a great bug to learn. Okay, whatever. Anyway, I think we should still be fine, but that's... Wow. Alright, uh, let's do this. Let's go ahead and throw a bunch of metal tiles here. And this is going to be the place that we're effectively sweeping up a whole bunch of the ice to be put into this system. I know I said we were going to start with polluted ice uh, first, which I'm a little bit nervous about now because we don't have as much water. And uh, that will more than likely freeze all the water here and that'll just shut the whole system down. So that's definitely not what we want to do. But we at least do have enough to get this started, so... I can't believe that. I swear it used to be like, if you built on a spot, it would try to push everything else out of the way. Otherwise, that's pretty... Yeah, I don't know. That's a pretty cheap way to solve some problems. Unless it's always been that way, but I swear it wasn't. But whatever. Alright, shipping. Let's get a conveyor loader here. Uh, actually, let's put it like that. Uh, I want to put it up a little bit higher so that my duplicates can go out and grab some stuff from the storage bins. I guess I don't need this many metal tiles, but whatever. Um, can any of the ice that we want swept up, or really just anything in general, we can have it all brought there. And then anything that we want sorted into our system for ice can just be gone through this conveyor loader. My vocabulary is really bad right now, but whatever. So... Uh, let's get all this stuff hooked up to power really quickly. I guess we don't need to hook up our uh, automatic dispensers. They'll work as we want them to, no matter what. Then we just need to run a conveyor rail up into our system, like that. This will... Uh, looks like we're getting our temperature up here pretty good. This is also why we hooked up our power at the same time, because these tepidizers are going to take a lot of power. And if you don't have some other power source here, you're probably going to run out. Um, and that's not a good place to be uh, in general, unless you want to start spending duplicate time on power, which I'd rather not. So, yeah. How much hydrogen do we have in here, by the way? Still seven tons. Okay, that's hilarious. <laughs> there is so much hydrogen. Those Saturn critter traps are busted. All right, once they get all this stuff set up, uh, we'll start bringing some ice up here so we can integrate it into the system. We can also start it with start off with some snow because snow is so um, easy to melt. So we could start off with that just to add a little bit of extra water. But the way we're gonna get water out of this, which I'm guessing there's some people that have been like, what are we doing? Are we ever going to get this done? Uh, yes, but uh, a couple things we gotta do first. When we're going to get water out of this system, I want to put the pump a little bit higher than the rest of this. And I probably want to put it on like a thermo sensor to make sure that I'm not pumping out water that's too cold or too hot or something like that. I guess by virtue of the thermo sensor down here, I might not need to do that actually. So instead, let's just use a hydro sensor. And we could put it up a little bit higher too to make sure that everything gets submerged as much as possible. Where does this come out? Yeah, I want to use this layer for something else. Let's just do this. 
Uh, this is so awkward. Okay, never mind. I guess I'll just... Yeah, I'll just move everything else up. <laughs> just waste a little bit more time here. So if we do this, um, we could put our hydro sensor up here to mean that we basically want our water line to go up this high. Um, when it reaches that high, we will start pumping it out, but we also won't waste power running this unless there's actually a reason to. So, kind of a double purpose here, but we can go ahead and put a hydro sensor there. And if it's ever above, like, I don't know, 200 kilograms or something like that, then we can let any water get pumped out of here that we have produced. So there we go. Um, let's take a quick editing break here really quickly up until I have some ice swept over here. And then we'll turn on the whole system. We'll watch it run. And we'll start getting the rest of our power system set up here because there's still a couple more things we need to do before the whole loop is closed. Especially considering we have basically no consistent flow to our bathrooms right now. So we'll get there. Okay. Duplicants are furiously working down here to get me some ice. And I think we've gotten enough so far. Um, so all I'm going to do is first, let's start sending through some snow. Since that's one of the easier ones to melt off. So there's usually not very much snow here, so this isn't going to do much. But I'm clearly very worried about making sure that we retain this water down here. So as it comes through, it'll just come through the line. And when this is totally full of water, this might even melt before it gets this far. Um, and eventually we will not want them to always be loading ice into here. Uh, we'll probably want to set up a system so that if there's already no need for water, then there's no need to send any more ice up here. Um, yeah, but we'll figure that out. So there we go. Uh, got some in here. It should melt pretty quickly. Let's send our ice behind as well. No reason to be so cautious, I suppose. I don't think a few things of ice are going to, uh freeze all this stuff since we have our tepidizer up and running, so I think we should be fine. So as the ice comes through here, um, it should start turning into water pretty quickly, and then this water level should rise up to the pump. It won't be dramatically fast, but it will get there kind of quickly. This is one of the better ways to melt water. This is a little bit what I was worried about. Some of the smaller packets of ice, or rather water, can turn back into ice and then uh, that could hurt us. But now that we've gotten this started, we have momentum going forward. And this should give us all the water that we need for quite a long time. Um, because this is going to be a mixture of regular water and polluted water, we will eventually start sending polluted ice through here as well, once we have enough of a water level. Um, we need to filter it, so let's do that. Uh, filter, I'm just going to put up a water sieve here. And this is kind of an awkward spot. I was really debating whether to put it here, but... I guess I just didn't see a big enough reason to. It's like just one pipe there and back, but whatever. Uh, so this is going to be some very cold water, potentially. So let's send it through some... Actually, hmm, I'm thinking about this. This should be relatively cool water by this point. So let's just send it through regular pipes. So I'm just going to send it through some regular pipes here. And because I don't know if this is clean or dirty water, I guess like polluted water, whatever... Um, I'm gonna just send everything through a sieve, and then everything in that sieve is just gonna get sent back uh, over to some tanks that I'm gonna put up here that are gonna be where we store all our water. Then we can hook up our water stores to the uh, conveyor loader so that the conveyor loader doesn't actually send anything unless we need more water. So something like this. There. That should be plenty, especially since we're not going to have huge demands for it on this planet, but there you go. There. Uh, now, we can take this, and we need to find a way to run it into the system, but this is getting a little goofy. There we go. There. So, once the water level starts to rise enough, which you can see how quickly this is producing it, considering all the time that I've had it paused. And I'm, also, I'm only running off of uh, 2x right now, so... Yeah, it's a pretty good amount of water production as we go here. Eventually, when this starts to run out of ice, you can switch this over to polluted ice because polluted ice will melt better. But just bear in mind that if your water level's low, it's just going to be kind of a risk of freezing everything. Uh, so yeah, let me let this run for just a little bit, and then we'll uh, fill up our liquid lock, we'll get our second soup bags done, we'll make sure we have the rest of our water hooked up, we'll start growing food, and then I think we can call ourselves sustainable 
on this asteroid before we start doing some of the more specialized systems. So yeah, I'll just kind of keep this running for a little bit and then we'll finish this video out when I come back. Okay, uh, got more water in our chamber here. Also started sending through polluted ice as well as regular ice. Got rid of this tile here too. I couldn't tell and now I'm very suspicious. Uh, whether any ice or anything that was melted within tiles was actually just being deleted. Wouldn't surprise me with what we just saw, so I got rid of that just in case. But yeah, starting to send more ice and polluted ice here, and having my duplicates continue to dig hard to get a lot more ice uh, loaded into the system. This is going to take a little bit before it's ready, but one thing that I wanted to also check was that we are not making water that's too hot. Now that we're not too worried about it, um, I'm going to raise, or rather lower the temperature down to about 25 so that we hopefully get water that's pumped out of here at a reasonable temperature. It looks like the temperature difference between the top and the bottom is relatively the same, but I'm just nervous that it'll get too low up here and we'll start pumping out water that's too cold, but that's always a problem we can solve later too. Uh, so yeah. Uh, so we're just going to be waiting until this is entirely filled up, but for the sake of going quicker, I'm just going to speed past this a little bit. Uh, we'll go back and we'll reset this really quickly. Uh, we're just going to turn on our pump so that our water starts pumping. And this water is just going to go over to a sieve that I set up, then back to some tanks that are just chilling here. Uh, this is just like a convenient place to put it for right now. It doesn't necessarily need it right here. And then I'm just going to connect an automation wire to my last tank in the chain over to this conveyor loader. Only because I only want uh, more ice to be melted if I actually need water. Otherwise this is going to get overfilled and start breaking the walls and get overpressured and stuff like that. So I'm only going to allow more ice to come in if we actually need more water out of the system. And I know I've talked about this a lot, but the only reason this works is because it is hooked up this way so that all these tanks basically function as one. So that the tank on the left will be filled first, this will be filled last, this will also empty first if it goes out the same direction that it came in. So if they're both coming in and going out on the left, then this system with the uh, automation wire works uh, just fine. So that's what I'm going to do for the time being. Um, the other two things that we need to do with this water is, one, we need to create a liquid lock for our suits that are going to go here. So let me deconstruct this really quickly and get this uh, rebuilt. But I'm just going to create a liquid lock just like we did up above. This one I am going to uh, make a little bit taller, or rather more filled out than this one, just because it's going to be bordering an area that could get very cold and freeze, and I'd rather just have the safety net there. Let me get rid of these really quickly. But yes, pretty typical water lock here. Nothing crazy going on. Just need to make sure that the rest of this is all with insulated tile as well. And then we could just hook it up straight into the line uh, that's coming out of our tanks. So it's already being fed into our bathrooms and stuff right now. Just kind of connect it like this. There we go. And put a quick hydro sensor in here. Then we can start enforcing our duplicates using these suits. So... I just got the suits set up in advance so that they'd be filled and ready for us to use. I am still going to be pumping oxygen down here, just because uh, we still will need some pressure down here for the sleet wheat to be able to grow naturally. And that's something I'm also going to mention again. It's been a long time since we talked about this because it was in the very beginning of the game. But as you're digging down through here, try to preserve all the natural sleet wheat the best you can. The easiest way to tell is if you hit the harvest button and then hit dig, you can start digging around and make sure that you're not digging up any of the sleet wheat as you go. So like, I'm leaving the tile that's there below it. You also want to check to make sure that if it's on snow, that you're not digging out the tile below the snow, otherwise it's going to destroy the plant. Um, this is one of the easiest ways to get food in the game, and berry sludge is really strong, so this is going to be one of our central points for more berry sludge over time as well. Where'd this water come from? Uh, so yeah, the berry sludge that we produce here, we could either shoot back with an interplanetary launcher, or we could have uh, rockets land here occasionally, if it's within range of anything for CO2, which I don't think it is. Maybe if we bounced off of this other asteroid. No, even that's too far. Hmm. Okay then, sounds like interplanetary launcher it is, but a lot of times you can actually bounce from asteroid to asteroid and do shipping that way if you want to. Um, 
Even if it's just enough berry sludge for the duplicate that lives here by themselves, that'll be totally fine too, because it's not like we're having food problems anywhere else, but this can be another push if you want to maybe add some more duplicates or something like that to get some more food. Or if you were relying on food types that you don't want, or if your ice biomes in your main base or second base got destroyed or something like that, this is a way that you can at least get more of it uh, set up and ready to go. Alright, one last thing before we need to consider ourselves sustainable on this is we need to add some bristle blossoms. And we're going to add those by just putting a row of it here. We probably don't even need that many. Um, that's just so that we can actually make berry sludge. You can't make that until you're growing bristle blossoms. I'll just create a whole row here just because it looks nicer. <laughs> we don't actually need that much, I don't think. But I'll set up our ceiling lights here. Let's use some silly ones. I don't know. Let's use the polka dot one. Why not? Then we just need to feed it some of the water that we're getting. And we should also check the water temperature of what's in here right now. It's now, now, now starting to come out at about 29. This hasn't turned back on, so I think this is going to settle at a reasonable point eventually. Um, and notice how none of the ice is flowing because we don't have our automation wire hooked up yet. But that is proof that we wouldn't necessarily be generating any extra water if this was already full. So I should probably lower this, actually. Let's set the high threshold to, like, 40. Maybe the bottom one to, like, 10. Just so we give ourselves plenty of buffer because there's a lot of pipes out here. Um, anyway, I think you get the idea. We'll just hook this up to our water supply. Just something like this. And that'll create our berry sludge for us, or rather the bristle berries that we're going to need for our berry sludge. Then we can have this going, and that pretty much makes us sustainable here. Just need to get that planted and hook up to uh, our water supply, but that's all stuff we've seen before, so we don't necessarily need to sit around and watch for that. But that'll pretty much do it. Now that we have some water in our tanks here, let me check the temperature. Yeah, we may still need to pump out some of this colder water just to get this going, but... Yeah, now that we have that, I'm going to call us sustainable on this asteroid, and I think that's going to do it. So, thank you very much for watching. In the next one, we will tackle starting to produce rad bolts at this temporal tear opener, so we can start making some progress with that. Um, we need to first find the temporal tear, too, so I'm debating whether we're going to do that immediately, or if we're going to be doing something else. We need to keep our exploration rocket busy. Uh, I need to find the Temporal Tear, but we also may just start getting ready to head to the next asteroid early. Um, so I have already been gathering supplies for it. Still need some more, so we need a couple shipments from some other asteroids and stuff before we go. But yeah, we'll take care of that when we get back. So anyway, thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.